the Lord. I may not be able to raise my voice real high this morning, but uh, we want to do what we can for Him. We're told in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul said that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of man. We have to do what we do with the infirmity of the flesh. We're still in the flesh, and the flesh is weak, and uh, the scripture tells us the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that, and that don't just necessarily mean a tendency to sin. It means all the other things that go along with being human, having sickness and having frailty, and different things, having to suffer pain, sorrow, and heartache, and loss, and all like that. But thank God I'm glad. Amen. As, as Paul said, we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Amen. I'm like Sister Linda this morning. Amen. I just want to praise him. Thank God. Rather than dwell on, on the, the complaints that we have and, and things like that and the things that go wrong in our life, everybody has that. Uh, the Bible tells us that man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He said uh, again in the book of Job that we are born into trouble as the sparks fly upward, it's just natural, just part of being human. But I want to praise him. Thank God I want to give him glory and I want to give him honor. First of all, for saving my soul. And thank God. Then I want to give him glory and I want to give him honor. Because he promised me I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. But he said I'll go with thee all the way even to the end of the world. He promised us that he would make our bed in our sickness. He promised us that if we would call upon him in the day of trouble, he said, I will deliver thee. Thou shalt glorify me. What a blessing that is. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. So if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, turn with me in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. And very, very familiar passage of Scripture. I've quoted many, many times. And uh, we quote it all the time. Other preachers do preach from it many, many times. And and the other preachers have. But uh, we just want to uh, feel like that God would have us to turn here this morning. And I may just have to uh, uh, modulate my voice and keep my tone down. But, but thank God I'm glad that the Spirit of God is not in how loud I lift my voice. Amen. The power is not in how, how uh, 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 high I can get my voice. But thank God it's in the Word of God. The power of God. The Word of God is the power of God and the salvation. And it's in the Lord. Thank God it's in the Spirit of God. But in uh, John chapter 14 and verse number 6, only, only uh, verse that I have on my heart this morning, uh, John chapter 14, verse number 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm going to stop reading there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'd like to preach to you just a little while this morning on, on the thought of what Jesus said of about himself. You notice here, first of all, he said, uh, again, Jesus saith unto him, I am. Thank God. I, I want to I wanna say this morning, thank God that I'm glad that Jesus is the great I am. He, he's the one, my beloved. Amen. Whether the world wants to receive it or whether the world don't, whether they want to recognize him as what he is or whether they don't, Thank God it don't change, my beloved. Amen. The fact of the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the one that stepped out on every on nothing and made everything. He's God manifest in flesh. My beloved. He said, Verily, verily, I say I, he, he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. I am, thank God. I'm glad that he is God manifest in truth. Jesus is God and, and we're we're told in the book of uh, 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 book of uh, John chapter number eight of how that the Jews they began to uh, in one sense make their boast of, uh, in Abraham their father and, and Jesus told them 
He said in, in, in John 8 and 56, I believe it is, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And they said unto him, Art thou not, uh, thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh, before Abraham was, uh, I am. Jesus Christ was uh, and is God manifest in flesh. I want to tell you, beloved friend, this morning, uh, amen, that is the number one identifier uh, and the number one mark, my beloved friend, of uh, uh, biblically speaking or or, 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 or Christian, uh, speaking in the, in the way of Christianity, uh, amen, to mark something that is a cult. Uh, amen, it's not that they try to control people, though that's part of it. Uh, it's yeah. not that they try to take everything that they have and, and try to control their lives and, and certainly that's part of it but beloved friend the very uh, 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 biggest thing uh, uh, that, uh, that is a uh, mark, uh, mark of distinction of a cult uh, is what they believe concerning uh, Jesus Christ those my beloved uh, Amen. That deny that Jesus Christ was God manifest in flesh. Amen. Mark them down. Amen. They are not a Christian denomination. They are not Christian at all. But they, my beloved, are a cult this morning and have denied the word of the living God and are denying the person of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was and is God manifest in flesh, regardless of what a man thinks about it, my beloved. And listen, my beloved, amen, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, the apostle Paul said, and great, I was the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and received up in the glory. Jesus Christ was and is, amen, God manifest in flesh. And the Father spoke to him in the book of Psalms, and then it's recorded again in the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. And he said, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hand. Jesus Christ was the one, my beloved, that stepped out on nothing and made everything. He's the one, my beloved, this morning that meted out the heavens with a span. He's the one, my beloved, amen, that uh, 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 took of the dust of the ground, uh, amen, and, and formed a man and breathed into his nostrils, uh, and man became a living soul. You see, that's why, my beloved, amen, that he was able to walk on the water. How that's why, my beloved, how that he was able to, to, to heal the lame and the halt, the maim, my beloved, and able to heal the sick, amen, able to give, amen, hearing to the deaf and, and so on, because he was God manifesting flesh. He was the one that made the body, my beloved, and he was able to heal the body because he is, uh, he was and he is God uh, manifest in flesh. Uh, thank God. Uh, and, uh, and that's why, my beloved, uh, amen, that he could turn the water into wine. And uh, uh, that's why he could walk up there, uh, amen, to the tomb of Lazarus and he could cry out and say, uh, Amen. Lazarus come forth, and he that was dead, amen, came forth wrapped in great clothes and a, and a napkin about his face, and he was able to say, loose him and let him go because he's God, a manifest in flesh. He's God, and if Amen. That's why he's greater. Uh, and Christianity is greater than any other religion uh, on the face of the earth. They all believe in false gods this morning. Uh, but thank God we believe in the God of glory. Amen. We believe in the God that made everything. Uh, amen. We believe in the, in the God uh, that gave to all of us life uh, and strength and made it possible this morning. Uh, amen. That we could get out of bed. Amen. I kind of felt like I wasn't going to hardly make it this morning. But thank God I'm glad He gave me the grace that I need. You know, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, 
Hey man, Paul, just like you and I, hey man, he was compassed about with infirmity and the Bible tells us that Paul was caught up into the third heaven and he received things. He said it was not lawful for me to utter and he said because of the abundance of the re revelation, hey man, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me and he said I besought the Lord prize and that it might be removed but he said that third time there was a voice came from heaven and said Paul and my grace is sufficient for thee I thank God he's the one this morning how that give us grace Amen. what a blessing I'm glad he's God manifest in flesh yes that's why when the Pharisees and the Sadducees taught the things that they did. Hey man, Jesus knew their thoughts even before they spoke because he was God a manifest in flesh. What a blessing. I'm glad he's God this morning. I'm glad that he knows all things. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, I might think, hey man, that I know what's best for me. And there's been many things that I've desired down through life, hey man, that God's not let me have. But I want to tell you this morning, He knows exactly, hey man, what's right for me. And He knows exactly what's right for you. I thank God He knows the end from the beginning. He knows all things, thank God. And He gives us just exactly, hey man, what we need. Hey, I'd like to have riches. I'll be honest with you. I'd like to have wealth. Hey, you know, I think to myself, I'll think about all the good that I could do if I had a million dollars. But you know what? Hey Amen. So far, it's not been the will of God that I get it this morning. You see, God knows more about me than I know about myself. Hey Amen. And it might be best for me that I don't have that. And certainly this morning, beloved friend, hey Amen. Those that have a wealth and certain riches and put their faith in uncertain riches, my beloved friend, they have a hard time. Hey Amen. Accepting God and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm glad. He's God manifesting. I'm glad He knows all things. <laughs> he knows everything about you. <laughs> and He knows everything about me. He knows our downsitting. He knows our uprising. Amen. We've said it so many times. Of late. He knows our thoughts afar off. Thank God He knew, he knew beloved friend. Uh, amen. Everything about us before we was ever born. <laughs> what a blessing that is. <laughs> yes. And He was able to look down. <laughs> Amen. Thank God when Amen Philip go, go, go went and found Nathaniel. Amen. Jesus was uh, even though he wasn't there. Amen. He was able to see Nathaniel under that fig tree. Amen. And when Nathaniel came to him, he said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no God. And Nathaniel answered and said, Lord, uh, uh, how did you, how, when, when did you see me? He said, before Nathaniel called thee, uh, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. And Nathaniel said, thou art the king of Israel. And the Lord said, because I told you this, you believed. He said, you're going to see greater things than these. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. I want to tell you, yeah, that's why he was able. Amen. When the, when the disciples were pulling and rowing, Amen. When he sent them across to the other side and the storm, Amen, beat vehemently against them, and they were toiling, toiling and rowing and could not get to the other side, and he came walking to them upon the water. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. Amen. When he was asleep in the ship that one time. That's why that he was able to get up then when they called him and said, Lord, carest thou not how that we perish? Amen. And he said, oh, ye of little faith. He said, peace be still. And there was a great calm. I want to tell you something. You can have a great storm in your life. And Jesus can speak sweet peace to your soul. Amen. He can deliver you. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. And he said, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. What a blessing that is. I'm glad, amen, that he's God manifest in flesh. Amen. Thank God. 
all oh, this is my beloved friend. He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He appeared first to the ladies, and then he appeared unto all of the other disciples. Amen. In the upper room, except Thomas. Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas came in later on, and they told him, said, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. He's alive, Thomas. We've seen him. And Thomas answered and said, Except I thrust my finger in the nail print in his hand and thrust my hand in his side, he said, I will not believe. Oh, a few days later, they were all gathered in that upper room again and Jesus appeared in their midst. They had the door shut up. They had the windows shut up, but he appeared in their midst. And he told him, said, Now, Thomas, reach hither thy finger and put it in the print in my hand. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it in my side. And be not faithless, but believing. The Bible don't say he did it, but I like to think old Thomas dropped right to his knees. And he cried out and said, My Lord and my God. Amen. He never thrust his hand in his side. He never put his finger, amen, in the nail prints in his hand. Oh, thank God. Yes, amen. Jesus appeared to them in the upper room. And they were afraid. Amen. They were they were scared. They were afraid. Amen. And oh, all listen, Jesus said, Touch me, handle me, for a spirit hath not flesh and bone. As you see me have. They thought he was a ghost. Oh, thank God that you see he was God. Manifest in flesh. It was not possible that he should be holding a death. And thank God as God. Honey, he could not have died on that cross had he not dismissed his soul. Oh, his spirit, I want to tell you this morning, my beloved, amen, that, 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 uh, amen, uh, that last two cries from the cross, uh, amen, Jesus cried out and said, Father, it is finished into thy hands. I come in my spirit. And he gave up the ghost, thank God. What a blessing that is. Yes, he made that trip. Amen, that Brother Steve was talking about this morning. Book of Romans, I believe it is, says what? Is it that he ascended, but that he first also descended into the lower parts of the earth? And the Bible tells us that he went and preached under the spirits in the prison. And thank God he delivered them. What a blessing that is. Oh, I'm so glad. Why? Because he was God. <laughs> yes, amen. Thank God. Amen. He said, I am. Jesus said, I am God. Amen. <clears throat> Listen, my beloved friend, he told those Jews in John 8 and 58, he said, before Abraham was, I am. He's ever-present God. He, he, he is... Uh, the one that he, he has been, he is, and he ever shall be. He is the eternal God this morning. Thank God he's the eternal one. That's why he said, I beheld Satan, past ends, as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus was there to witness the rebellion of Satan and, and to see him cast out of heaven. He was there. Why? Because he's the second person of the Godhead and the second person of the Trinity. He's God the Son. Thank God. What a blessing that is. Yes, he said, I am Jesus. And, and there, there's, there's people who try to argue today that Jesus never said he was God. Jesus never, never said, and, and Jesus never rebuked anybody for calling him God. Amen. When Thomas uh, cried out to him and said, My Lord and my God, Jesus didn't correct him because he was right. Mm -hmm. He's Lord Amen. and he's God this morning. Right. He's God manifest in flesh. Mm -hmm. And if you'll receive it this morning, mm -hmm. Amen, the night before Jericho fell, Amen, 
Oh, listen, my beloved friend, when the captain of the host of Israel appeared, amen, unto, unto Joshua, and Joshua asked, are, are, you, are you on our forward? He said, as the captain of the host of Israel, am I come? I want to tell you that was free incarnate Christ if you'll receive it. Amen. That was Jesus, my beloved. I mean, the one that spoke to Moses at the burning bush, my beloved. That was Jesus. If you'll receive it. And the voice of the Lord God that came walking in the cool of the day, crying out, Adam, where art thou? If you'll receive it, that was him. Oh, thank God he was there. From the beginning. What a blessing. He's God manifest in flesh. Not only that. He said that Jesus saith unto him. Thomas saith unto him. Lord we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him. I am the way. The truth and the life. He's on the way this morning. Jesus said I am the door. The sheepfold. By me if any man enter in. He shall go in and out and find pasture. He said, I am the door. He's the way this morning. He's the only way. And people have one of two choices. Amen. They can either choose to go through the door. And they can either choose Jesus Christ and the Son of the living God. And they can either, either choose Jesus Christ and God manifest in flesh. Or they can reject Him. They die lost and go to devil's hell. I want to tell you this morning, every time some great person dies, and we just saw it again with the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, they start talking then. They ain't got no use for God any other time, hardly. They ain't got no use for any mention of heaven any other, and they certainly got no use for any mention of hell. But whenever some great person dies, that, that's the first thing they say. And I want to tell you something, honey. Christ deniers don't enter into the portals of glory. Amen. Anybody that denies that Jesus is the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God, they do not go to glory. And they do not go to heaven, my beloved. And that leads on to the other place Brother Steve was mentioning. It's either heaven or it's hell. Either you choose Jesus, either you be born again, either you accept Christ by faith and the finished work on the cross of Calvary and by faith, amen, repenting of your sin, and being born again, a washed in the blood of Jesus, a saved by the grace of God, or you die lost and go to devil's hell. Only two places to go. Amen. Like Brother Steve said, there is no such place. That's purgatory this morning. There is no halfway place where people go where they can atone for their sins and eventually be accepted into glory. Amen. What Steve read you this morning in the Gospel of Luke, uh, amen, it declares the rich man died uh, and was buried uh, and in hell he lifted his eyes being in torment. I want to tell you, you've accepted the God of glory you either accept the Lord Jesus Christ or hell is going to be your eternal home. Well, I want to tell you this morning, Jesus said, I am the way. Amen. Peter, James, and John, the others stood up on the day of Pentecost and they preached and, and Peter said, neither. Acts 4 and 12, I believe it is. Peter said, neither. Is there salvation in any other? Uh, for there is none other name under heaven given among men uh, whereby we must be saved. No other name. No other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. Muhammad ain't going to get you there. Amen. Buddha will not get you there. Confucius will not get you there. And the many gods of Hinduism will not get you there. Amen. Joseph Smith will not get you there. You only go through and by the virgin born son of the living God. God manifest in flesh. I don't believe he was born, that he was God. Then you can't go to glory. I don't believe he's the only way for a church. Then you don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible and you can't go to glory. Amen. If men, women, boys, and girls are going to be saved, 
They're going to have to receive the Jesus of the Bible. Not some mamby pamby made up Jesus. Amen. Not some Jesus that just goes along to get along. Not some Jesus. Amen. That will go back on his word and will not require holiness and will not require righteousness and will not require separation. And my beloved will not require repentance of sin. Amen. And rejection of the world and this world system. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. You've got a false Jesus. Is that the Jesus you got? My Jesus said, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Amen. My Jesus said, if you die in your sins uh, where I am, uh, there you cannot come. My Jesus said, my beloved friend, you receive not the love of the truth that you might be saved. See, that's the problem with the world. They've got a problem with the truth. They don't want the truth. They can't handle the truth. But I want to tell you, honey, amen, we'd better be preaching people the truth. The only way they're going to be saved is if they hear and believe the truth. Amen. He said, I am the way. And then he said, I am the truth. The world don't want to receive this. The world don't want to receive the truth this morning. But listen, my beloved, 2 Corinthians 3 and 8, I, I believe he said we can do nothing against the truth. How about call the truth? And I want to tell you something. The truth's going to stand when the world's on fire. Amen. It's not what I think. It's not what you think. It's not what my denomination or any other denomination thinks. Amen. It's what the said. How the word of the living God. It's what the word says. And Jesus is the word. Amen. He is the word. John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was what? The Word was God. And the same that was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made how that was made. Honey, that tells me that no matter how they dress it up, my beloved friend, amen, no matter how much they declare it to be science, amen, listen, we need not accept and we must reject, amen, the fable of Darwinian evolution, amen, there was not anything that was made, my beloved, that was made without Jesus Christ, the living Word of God. He made all things. Thank God He created this universe. And I want to tell you something, honey. Amen. They can look all they want to. I don't think they're going to find anything out there. And like one person said, if it was out there, it'd come from here. Amen. Oh, listen. Amen. Listen. He is the author of life. Thank God. He is the, the, the creator of all things. He made all things. What a blessing that is. See, he said, let there be, and there was. You see, man's got a problem with that. And the reason that man has a problem with that, and why that they reject God, I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. You see, if they recognize, amen, that he's the great God of the universe, and that he made all things, and, they, and that he made them, then they must accept that he has the right Amen. To require of them whatever he wants to. And he has the right to write a rule book that they must follow and to punish them if they do not. Amen. Keep that rule book. And that they don't want. It's because of their sin. They don't want to let go of sin. Amen. I want to tell you, beloved friend, he said, I'm the way. He said, I'm the only way. He said, I am the truth. He is the truth. Amen. He's the living truth. Thank God. What a blessing that he is. Amen. He stood before Pilate in John 18 and 37. And he told him, he said, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world 
that I might bear witness unto the truth. He told Pilate, he said, and Pilate told him, said, don't you realize I've got power to crucify thee and I have power to let thee go. And he said, thou wouldst have no power except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater condemnation. But he told Pilate, he said to this end, was I born, Pilate? Amen. The very fact that I'm standing before the before you accused, uh, falsely accused, uh, and the very reason that you're going to condemn me, uh, and the very reason that you're going to send me uh, to the old cross, uh, and that's why I came into this world. He said, to this end, was I born? Well, I want to tell you, you think about that, and I know Amen. I, I, Mary really didn't know, amen, what was going to become of Jesus. But she knew something special had happened. Amen. She knew that he was born of the Holy Ghost, that man had nothing to do with his birth. She knew that he was special. But, beloved friend, I don't think it really entered into Mary's mind of what it meant when that little baby was born. And every one of us, when our children come into this world, we brought our children into this world to live. But God brought His Son into this world to bleed and die for us on the cross of Calvary. He was born. He said, to this end was I born. Uh, Pilate, this is a reason that my Father has sent me into this world. It was to bleed and to die. All oh, Revelation describes Him as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Oh, listen, the Bible said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I want to tell you something. I never did whip one of my children but what it didn't rip my heart out. And, I, and you know, I heard parents make that statement when I was a kid, this is going to hurt me and it's going to hurt worse and it's going to hurt you. And I think to myself, how can that be? <laughs> until I was a parent myself. And I'll be honest with you, there, there was many a time I let them slide. And there's many another time that I, I wanted to let them slide, but I knew that I couldn't. Well, listen, the Bible said, it don't say he that uh, 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 spares a rod, uh, spoils a child. It said he that spareth a rod hateth his child. And I'm going to tell you, if you love your children, you'll correct them. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, we're bearing the fruit right now of parents who did not teach their children right from wrong, and did not correct them, and did not punish them when they did wrong, and gave them everything that they wanted, and we're bearing the fruit of it as a nation right now. Amen. Amen. And I would whip my children. And sometimes... Hey man, I'd, I'd, I'd whip them and I'd tell them they had to stay in the room for a while. And the reason was I didn't want them to see Daddy crying. And I shut the door up and I walked away and tears began to roll down my cheeks because it broke my heart that I had to whip my children. I didn't want to hurt my children. But I want to tell you this morning, bloody friend, uh, amen, uh, listen, uh, God the Father, uh, amen, gave His Son, uh, not for what He did, uh, but for what we did. Oh, what a blessing that is. Jesus God, the Bible said, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. He said it pleased the Lord to bruise Him. Oh, my beloved friend, from the very foundation of the world, God looked forward in time. And He saw me at my very worst. And He saw you at your very worst, my beloved. Amen. Jesus did. And He said, Father, I'll go and I'll pay their sin days. And the Father said, Son, I'll let you. Well, I want to tell you, I've got two children for a long time. My children, my sons were born 10 years so far. But Karen and I, had, Karen had infertility problems. She went through all kinds of surgeries and suffered a lot to be able to have that second child. Well, I want to tell you this morning, that for a long time, I only had one. 
And I can kind of relate in sort of a sense. As somebody giving their all to God. So then the second one came along. And I had two. I want to tell you I love you this morning. I love you with all my heart. I love you. But I want to tell you this morning that if, if it took my child that's standing between you and ever, everlasting damnation, I could not give my child for you. I couldn't do it. But that's how much God the Father loved me. And that's how much He loved you that He was willing to give His only begotten Son. The only one, the perfect one, He was willing to place my sin and your sin upon him. Oh, what a blessing that is. Amen. Oh, thank God. And he went to that cross with joy. The Bible said for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the Father. Thank God. You say, preacher, how could he endure? Dear it with joy because he knew that he was going to receive a bride. He knew that I'd be saved and you'd be saved. That gave him joy. And Jesus went to the cross willingly and with joy. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. And he said, I am the life. He's, the, he's, the, 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 he's, he's life itself. Amen. And I, I've said this before, and, I, and I'll say it again. Amen. With everything that they did to Jesus, <laughs> He should have been dead long before He got to the cross. And I want to tell you this morning, my beloved, as He was there hanging between the heavens and the earth, had He not cried out and said, Father, it is finished. Into Thy hands I commend my spirit and gave up the ghost, He'd still be hanging there today. It was not possible. Amen. That life itself I could be destroyed. He dismissed his spirit. What a blessing that is. Amen. Thank God. I'm glad he's life. And he tells us in John 10 and 28, he said, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man put them out of my hand. And my Father which giveth them me is greater than all, and no man shall be able to put them out of my Father's hand. He's life itself. Thank God, and as Jesus was there in the upper room, John 17, and he was praying to the Father, and he said, This is... Life eternal, that they might know thee and the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. He's life this morning. Jesus said I'm life. Thank God. What a blessing that is. Amen. Thank God. He told Martha in John 11 and 25, he said I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, and yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this. We preached on that just a couple of weeks ago. Amen. The first one was people that are spiritually dead. But if they'll believe in him, thank God they can have life. Amen. And the second one, my beloved friend, after that you have that life, thank God you don't have to suffer that second death. Amen. Blessed and holy is he that hath power in the first resurrection, for on such the second death hath no power. Thank God. What a bliss. I don't have to go to hell this morning. Amen. I don't have to go, amen, to a lake that burneth with fire and brimstone called the second day. Why? Because I took part in the first resurrection. I believed in life itself. I put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, I am the life. 
1 John 5, 11 says, This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. Thank God I'm glad I've got the life. Amen. The life lives within me. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, amen, the very millisecond that I believe moved inside of me in the person of the Holy Ghost. And He's never left me. He's always been with me. And He's going to be there till the very end. And thank God when He leaves out, I'm going with Him. Amen. And like Brother Steve quoted this morning, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When I leave this walk of life, I go home to be with Him. Amen. What a blessing that is. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. He's life. Amen. Revelation 1 and 18, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Thank God. I'm glad he's the resurrection and the life. I may have to leave. Amen. This walk of life, we all may have to. Amen. Jesus may come right in the clouds of glory before that time comes. But if he don't, certainly we're going to have to die. It's point in the man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Amen. We're going to have to leave this body. One with flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. The word of God tells us. We're going to have to leave these bodies one way or another. They're not going to glory. Amen. Thank God we're going to receive a new body. We're going to receive a body made like unto his glorious body. And I won't have any searing pain in my side. I won't have any intense pain in my back and in my knees anymore. My wife won't suffer horrible debilitating headaches anymore. She'll be delivered there. Thank God whatever sickness and amen pain that you have. You'll not, and every one of us this morning... Most of you in here, some of you, there's a few close to my age, maybe a little bit younger. Most of you older than I am, but we're all, amen, we're on, the, 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 or the vast majority of us, I should put it that way, amen, are heading down the downward slope on the other side. We done passed over the hump a long time ago, amen. Death is staring us in the face. And I want to tell you something, folks. Uh, people talk about death being on their heels. Death isn't behind us. Death is out there in front of us waiting for us. Yeah. Amen. God uh, declared that he had uh, uh, given his bounds. Talking about, uh, amen, the life of man. He had given his bounds. Uh, and that he cannot pass over it. There's a line of demarcation out there somewhere. For some people it's Closer than for others. I was with my dad's only remaining brother for a couple of days this week and I started noticing how frail he was getting, how weak he was getting. He's had a couple of heart attacks. He's had lung cancer. He's had a stroke. And I asked him, I said, Ronald, how old are you now? He said, I'll be 72 in March. So far, my dad has been the longest living male member after my granddad. I'm talking about of his brothers, long, uh, brothers and sisters. The longest living male member of his siblings at 72 years of age. And my Uncle Ronald's about to get there. Dad died, uh, I think it was Thursday, 10 years ago Thursday, I believe it was. Dad left this walk of life, and Ronald was telling me, he said, Dad was right at 11 years older than him. I want to tell you something, folks. Amen. I'm 56 years old now. It seems like only yesterday I was playing in the dirt piles over in East Carter's Valley at my grandmother's house. I just turned around. It seemed like I, I never reached the age of 18, and I never reached the time that I could get married. Because I asked that girl to marry me before I turned 16, and I was in a hurry. 
We got married, and that, I was 19 years old. And it seemed like it took forever to get to that point. And the next thing I knew, I turned around, and I'm, and, and I'm hitting down the other side now. Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and then he's cut down. And I know everybody else feels the same way. And I can tell you right now, I, I feel just as good as I did when I was 16 years old. Till I move. Yeah. And then I, and, and I tell you, I go in and uh, I, I go in and I look in the mirror and I don't recognize the guy that's looking back at me. That's not the one I got in my mind. Amen. That guy that married that beautiful little redhead. Amen. 37 years ago, that's the one's in my head. Not this guy. He didn't weigh but 130 pounds instead of 220. And we're coming down to the end of the road. But thank God we've got the promise of a better day. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Thank God, what a blessing that he is. And he said, because I live, ye shall live also. Thank God there's going to come a day that he's going to come riding the clouds of glory. And we're going to hear the words that that Shulamite girl I was so glad and so long to hear. I rise up, my fair one, I my dove, and come away. We're going to go home to be with him. Hallelujah. What a blessing that is. I'm going to leave it right there. Yes, thank God. I am the way, uh, the truth, and the life, and no man I come unto the Father. But by me, I'm glad I put my faith and trust in Him, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Thank God. We're so glad this morning. Amen for the privilege of being here. And I wound up preaching harder than I thought I was going to. Amen. God, the Holy Ghost touched me this morning. Does anybody have a word on your heart? Anything you want to say for the Lord this morning? I just want to say I really enjoyed the message this morning. Good oh. my soul. We appreciate you. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Yes, let's do remember that. Amen. Anybody else have anything? If not, we'll ask everybody that could to you stand this morning. And Brother Allen, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer? And I'm hoping here.